I'm gonna make sure I'm giving enough space. I'm gonna measure, compare this distance to this distance on the model. So it should be a little wider there. So yes, should be pretty good. All right, eyebrows here. Here is a little well. The earlobe a little bit lower than the nose. Let's see. Next, we'll do the underpainting. But uh, first, why don't we uh, look at the palette? How I set it up: uh, white on one corner, black on the other. Uh, keeping warm colors on one side, these cool colors on the other. Um, uh, start with fairly light and moving towards uh, darker colors. There's this uh, kind of cool yellow called lemon yellow. It's quite light. Then we have uh, cadmium red, me or cad cadmium yellow medium, which is you know much warmer yellow. Uh, so we have a cool yellow, warm yellow. Uh, then we have cad orange, uh, cadmium red uh, light. And this is something like a cadmium red uh, deep, uh, alizarin crimson, uh, bur burnt umber. There's you know probably other uh, kind of earth earth tones you could put in there. Uh, but I'm trying to make some make a transition here from this kind of brown to uh, this green and this you know yellow ochre is kind of uh, a greenish yellow. It's also kind of uh, very, it's kind of neutral, so I put that in the corner. Moving to uh, permanent green light, then kind of a viridian. You know, one's warmer, one's cooler, one's more yellow, one's more blue, uh, cobalt blue, and uh, something like an ultramarine. Before we get to black, uh, and if I had the paint, I would put it out here. A, a Thalo blue because it's uh, kind of a complement to the ultramarine. It's, it's more of a greenish blue. This is more of a reddish blue. You know, I'm only going to use this uh, burnt umber like color. But I try to keep it fairly thin and uh, almost like uh, ink or something. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But this is a nice transition from drawing to painting, I think, in the process. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm going to try not to just copy what lines I have, but uh, maybe see if I've made any mistakes, try to do some correcting as I go. Um, some of these lines are a little too thick. Uh, it's important to use fairly thin, you know, thin lines. Uh, use a soft touch. Don't be in too much of a hurry. And I could specify a little. Maybe still use some lines in through here. Show some darker shadows. Maybe gotta be careful not to use too much paint though. Uh, often students will run into trouble using uh, too much paint and then I get frustrated with uh, trying to match the color precisely this you know first first time around and it's uh, quite difficult you know the this umber will uh, kind of alter the whatever color you put over it but the point isn't to get the color precise the first time well this is just uh, getting ready for blocking in you know you can always come back and look at color again I'm going to use fairly thin paint here. I don't think uh, my canvas has enough gesso on it, so it's sucking up the the oil anyway. I'll just fill in these uh, shadows kind of that are uh, kind of between the two light sources. Let's see, following this shadow edge down along his whole face. 
see in the background is pretty much all in shadow. So first thing, we'll start with the background. Uh, background is quite uh, dark. Uh, it's quite neutral, and it's quite cool. I think uh, if we compare it to uh, this part of his face, it's quite quite warm, but uh, it's also quite dark if we compare it to the light coming on this side. Okay, so I'll try to get some kind of general color that'll work out for that background. Uh, but it's hard to get it perfect first time. I'll just take some of this kind of Van Dyke brown or dark brown that I have here and try to cool it down with some cobalt blue. Here I'll just put some on. Oh, it's quite dark. So it's uh it's good to you know mix some paint, throw it out there, and see what happens. Uh so I'll get some white. Maybe too much. But I don't know, it's still still quite dark. Need to get more white. I'm not gonna mix it right in the middle of my pile. I'll bring it over to the side and kind of bring some in. Uh, I think I brought in too much, but let's see, compare that. Mm, bring in some of the uh, Van Dyke Brown again. Well, that probably would work better over here. That's going to be too dark now. But, got to start somewhere, even if it's too dark. I uh, got that on there. It's, I don't know. It may be too dark. It may not be. I won't know until I work on some more parts here. If this is that dark, then this has to be uh, lighter and more neutral. Way too cool. So... see here. So I'll just bring in a bunch of white. White will make it more neutral and it'll keep it cool. Uh, maybe a little bit too light. Uh, is that, it's a little bit darker. A little too brown. Maybe going a little bit on the dark side of uh, what I see, uh, but it's easier to make it lighter later, or I guess now, <laughs> easier to go back into it, light, to, easier to lighten things up and uh, darken them, so this may work for now, dark back there, it's probably, uh, we compare this to Another shadow, maybe around here on his neck, his uh, neck there, maybe nostril or pupil. You know, there's all there are quite a few very dark spots. Um, you know, this is probably not the darkest. You know, maybe his uh, pupil here would be even darker. So, starting off knowing where uh, the most extreme end of your uh, spectrum is going to be, and it helps to fill in all the other colors in between, all the other values in between.